It is really great to be back with my Social Innovation Summit community. This really is a great family. It is so wonderful to see old friends and make new ones like Eric, and you really did throw down the gauntlet. We have to be lively and energetic and enthusiastic, and that is something that I love about this community. Every year when I come to this, I'm challenged, I'm inspired, and I learn. So that's what we're gonna try to do today. So I'm Rachel Hutchison, and I have the honor and pleasure of leading corporate social responsibility for a cloud-based software company called Blackboard, where we power an ecosystem of good that helps our customers build a better world. So a couple of years ago, I had something on my mind, and I decided that I was gonna do a TEDx talk. And what I talked about was this shift that I was observing in how the needs of the corporate were, were less important. And instead, there was a shift to the needs of the human. So corporate social responsibility, I was arguing, really should be something that I called human social responsibility. And in that talk, I posed a fundamental question. What is a company, or any organization for that matter, without its people? Seems basic. But I think we should be looking at companies in today's world as conveners of people, of people seeking purpose, which we hear so much about and is where we began this morning in our very first session. We're also hearing from Edelman that trust in companies is up at a time when trust in other institutions is not. So, Today, we're gonna to talk about purpose and trust, and I'm gonna invite two wonderful uh, women up to the stage, leaders in their fields, and we're gonna in introduce you to them, and we're gonna unpack this idea. But before I do that, I wanna share three quick data points from my awesome colleagues at Your Cause, which is a Blackboard company. So over the last seven years, they've been doing this industry review, which is all about insights in the world of corporate social responsibility and employee engagement. And these three data points really show you that companies are moving the needle in how they are engaging their employees as agents of good. So number one, 45%. So this is the percent of employee giving that's done through a year-round campaign. So why does that matter? It matters because employees come into work wanting voice and choice. They don't want to be told exactly when to give or who to give to. And this shows you that companies are actually listening. 65%. This is the percent of employees who give again when their first ever gift within a company campaign is to a disaster relief effort. And that is important because it reminds us that we are all human. And when we see other people who are hurting, we act, and then we act again. And third, 43%, and this to me is amazing. This is the change in one year of the average employee volunteer hours, the increase at companies with more than 100,000 employees. And what this says is that big companies are doing big things. So with that, I want to invite Natalie Paquin, the President and Chief Executive Officer of Points of Light, and Alba Balin, who's the VP of Community and Stakeholder Relations at Coca-Cola, to join me to unpack this conversation. So welcome. Thank you both for being here. Thank you. So we have about 15 minutes to have, I know it's gonna be a robust conversation, about this idea of companies creating agents of good um, through their employees. So I wanna start with you, Natalie. So you are the CEO of Points of Light, which is this wonderful organization that focuses completely on volunteerism. So let's just start up really high. What are you seeing in terms of how people are engaging in volunteerism as a proxy for overall engagement um, now and heading out into the next 50 years? Yeah, well, if we start really high, we think historians will look back on this time and identify it as the civic century, a century when people were engaged from all different walks of life. Um, for us, we believe in the power of people. We talked about people. Um, we believe that it doesn't matter what business you're in, 
you're in the people business. That's right. People drive change. People are the most important equation in change. Um, we also believe that um, every action matters and no act is too small. So when you all go back, when we go back to our um, different ecosystems, we will all have choices. We will all make decisions. Every act matters. And uh, the last thing that we believe is, we also believe in the transformational um, power of partners. Um, this morning we talked about partnership, and so uh, we don't think that you can do it alone. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that we're seeing around the world, um, Points of Light is a global organization. We're in over 250 cities and 37 countries each year through our um, partners. We sit at the intersection of corporations and nonprofits and individuals. We engage over 5 million people. We are seeing that people actually are um, engaging in civic life in a number of ways. They're not just volunteering, they're using their voice, they're using uh, their, um, their purchasing power, they are registering to vote, they're deciding which companies they will work for, um, they're deciding what products and services they will purchase. And so um, there's a full ecosystem of civic engagement. And so what we're doing is we're not focusing on the noun or the adjective of describing a person as a volunteer. We're really focusing on the verb. Yeah. So given that context, and I love that, the civic century, and I look at my kids, I have a 19-year-old and a 21-year-old, and they embody that. Like, we focus so much on the millennials, but we see that whole group that's coming up and the way they live and breathe that every day is really wonderful and gives me hope. So um, think about that from the context of what are companies doing to help um, do their part in engaging people in this civic century? Well, um, companies are uh, working with our organizations. They're working with um, organizations in, um, in their communities. They're being more authentic in terms of their engagement. Um, they understand that their employees, uh, today's consumer is an activist. You can't, uh, which means today's employee is an activist. Uh, today's uh, person who wants to be civically engaged is, is an activist. And uh, what companies are doing is um, engaging their employees in more authentic ways ways because what they recognize is that we don't authenticate ourselves. Uh, the people that we engage with authenticate us and um, in a digital world they do so exponentially like that. Yeah. So Alba, mm -hmm. I wanted you to bring life to this. So we're seeing all these good things are ha that are happening in a world that is filled with a lot of bad news. And we're hearing you know, from Natalie about this overall view. So what's happening at Coca-Cola and what is the company doing? And then kind of as a second question, which we can get to after is, what are ex employees expecting of you, which is sometimes separate from what mm -hmm. the company wants to do? Sure. Well, when we think about us, our volunteerism strategy is based on the commitment that is as all as Coca-Cola, which is to support the communities we serve. What we're seeing today, you referenced that at the beginning, is voice and choice. We're leveraging our platform. We have a platform that is called Community Connect, and we're letting our associates go and help us understand what are their causes that they support in their local communities. And we have started to do a lot of focus groups, especially with the millennials, the centennials, to truly understand what are the drivers, what are the motivations, because we've seen the increase in number of hours in volunteerism. Like by the end of June, we will have surpassed the volunteers' hours that we had last year. So how, how did that happen? What did you do and what did they do to make that happen? Well, we started doing different focus groups and engaging our BRGs, our business resource groups, to understand across the different groups what is important to them, what are those causes. And we established a sustaining platform that has what we're calling the Coca-Cola Impact Days. And the Coca-Cola Impact Days, those are organized days where we partner with organizations like Points of Light and the different local affiliates to create activities that we've heard through employees. Mm -hmm. So that sustaining platform and them having the opportunity to help us shape the causes is what is making a difference. The other thing that we're doing is that we're creating opportunities where they can involve their families. Oh, interesting. Because when we think about volunteerism and we think <coughs> about giving, giving, we have you know, financial resources, but those are finite resources. With our associates, they are infinite because they want to bring their families, their friends, and it creates this ripple effect that is phenomenal. So 
we've seen that by including them and having them help us shape our strategy is in support of them and is helping us achieve phenomenal results. And at the end of the day, what we want to do is make a difference in our communities. So it sounds like in addition to voice and choice and giving them options for how they give and volunteer, you're actually putting them earlier in the cycle and listening to them to help mm -hmm. them actually drive what you're trying to do and drive your strategy, which really is wonderful because you know the first thing you should do is ask, what do your people care about? Yeah, wonderful good. ideas come up. Yeah. yeah. So. Um, I wanted to ask you specifically about disaster relief. Mm -hmm. um, what are you seeing with um, what, how your company is engaging, how it's mm -hmm. engaging people? And when we talked before, you were saying you were seeing a little bit of a different trend and how others are coming together. Because it is a very human moment when we see the suffering and mm -hmm. the, the, not just the moment of suffering, but the long standing that it, a disaster happens and it can take 15 years for a community to rebound. So talk to a little bit uh, about us a little bit about um, what Coca-Cola is doing. Yeah, when, when a disaster happens, one of the universal and most immediate needs is fresh, clean drinking water. So we are always working, we have a coalition, we mobilize our bottlers and our customers to really make sure that we're getting to the area in need as quickly as possible. But what we noticed in the last couple of years is that you get to these disaster areas and then you find the Deltas, the UPS, you know, the American Red Cross, other companies. So what we did is last year we said, let's have a collective approach. We invited companies, other companies in the Atlanta area, nonprofit, government, and different community partners to come and spend the day with us brainstorming on how could we be more efficient and effective when there is a disaster. So as a result of this, the group you know, came up with a couple of ideas and we're in the process of kind of branding this collective effort. We're calling it the Disaster Action Alliance. And the idea is that we can come together to share best practices. And when the disaster happens, we can, instead of going coke with our bottler and customer alone, we just have this network and then we together, we can help the area we can get there faster and we can drive greater results. And employees can feed into this? Employees, yes, they are, I mean, at the core. We normally, and we also have, you mentioned this earlier, about employees wanting to contribute, especially in a disaster. We also have an employee fund. We know go and support as a system, but also our associate wanted to create a fund that it could be part of their support. So we plus that up and the results are phenomenal and we can help and, and make a better impact together. Yes, yeah, so a lot of this is, is around this whole idea that the, the state of work, the nature of work has really changed and mm -hmm. who we are when we come into work has changed. So when I started work in the early 1990s, you really did leave a good bit of who you are in the car. You kind of, you got to work and you dressed a certain way and you put your work face on and you went and you worked. And, and today people are bringing their whole selves to work and their ideas and their opinions and their, um, you know, they want to truly engage through the company, but then also let the company um, let them engage. So thank you for sharing that. So Natalie, we talked, I, I said at the very beginning that trust in companies is up. And I referenced a study that I know you're passionate about, yeah. um, the Edelman study. And I know Points of Light has done a lot to share that with the organizations that it works with. So talk to us a little bit about what you th why you think that study is so important and what we're learning from it that's helping us understand all of the people and organizations we're dealing with today. Yeah, sure. Well, um, first of all, if you if you have not downloaded uh, or reviewed this year's uh, Edelman um, Trust Report, uh, the two, 2019 report, I encourage you to do so. Yep. Um, there are there's so m much data there. Uh, there's one statistic, and that statistic is 76% um, of people expect their employees to focus on purpose and profits. 76%. And 67% of employees actually believe that you can do both and that um, companies will be engaged. Uh, and so uh, when you really think about today's employees, when you think about today's consumers, um, they don't expect you to sit on the sidelines. As a matter of fact, uh, we have this saying at um, Points of Light where we imagine a world where it is impossible um, to stand on the sidelines. And we're taking that up and saying, let's erase the sidelines. Let's erase the sidelines so that no one is standing out 
-hmm. not working to build um, community. I'd just like to build on uh, one point that Alpa talked about really when it comes to disaster or any um, trying to solve any social problem with the power of people. Um, the first is the number one reason why people volunteer is because they're asked. Yeah. Same thing with giving. Yeah. Why'd you just, give? Because yeah. someone asked me. Just, just because they're yeah. asked. The number two reason why they come back is because they know they made an impact, which means that um, you have to be able to connect the action to what matters most. You didn't waste their time. And then the third reason why you may have them for a lifetime as Coke was doing, is to give them a good experience. And with the family, yeah. I love that part. Yes, it was really I mean, hard when my kids were growing up to find something that they could do that was meaningful. Well, I have an eight-year-old, and she loves joining those activities. And you know, it's, it's also an opportunity. One thing that we've done with our voluntarism is let teams go out. Sometimes you want to have those team building activities. We put together a team building toolkit that is tied to voluntarism. So they go, you know, they work together, they are engaged, but through the process, they are making a difference. And that is like, way better than just a team building alone. Yeah, so We're on the plane here, I was like reading Boston College's new report on community involvement, and it tells us year after year that employee engagement, CSR helps employee engagement, yeah. employee engagement is up, customer experience is up, it is all deeply connected. So all of these things truly matter as drivers of business and to reduce turnover and to give people what they want, which is a life of purpose, both at work and outside of work. So we have a couple of minutes left and I wanted to ask each of you, you both sit at really important vantage points in the world. Who inspires you? Who's doing things? What other companies are doing things? Other groups that you know that are really doing a good job in creating agents of good through their employees? Well, uh, who inspires me is any company that actually is a good corporate citizen, a company that sits in communities, that cares about communities, that knows community, and uh, is working to com improve community around the globe. We actually have a um, partnership. It's really unique partnership with uh, we, we have partnerships with number, a number of yeah. companies, but yeah. one in particular uh, is uh, um, Starbucks. Yeah. And what Starbucks is doing is really, really innovative. They're meeting their employees, they call them their partners, where they are, and um, supporting their employee engagement by um, uh, paying that employee 20 hours to work in the store and another 20 hours to actually go in the community. Yeah. And so we find um, partnerships and programs like that pretty yeah. innovative uh, because yeah. these are individuals who really don't have time yeah. uh, to do something extra. And we like to, to um, use the, uh, I like to use the saying is like, what do you have in common with Oprah and uh, Warren Buffett? Uh, they can't buy another minute. We all get 24 hours a day. Yeah. So, um, so the key is not to waste time and to leverage time. Yeah. Um, well, I am inspired by this new generation. When we, I look at the youth, the kids that are coming to work with us, they have a sense of purpose. And when I look at what they want to do, they are helping us shape our strategies. As a mom, I feel that their power, their collective coming together is a better future for my daughter. And people, there are people, and I'm gonna give you an example. I have a member of my team. His name is Enzo Piscopo. He um, had a personal you know, journey and an accident, and he was paralyzed from his waist down nine years ago. He was uh, in charge of knowledge and insights at a global level at Coca-Cola, and uh, it was one of the, seeing him, what he's done, he's now part of my team, and he started this whole movement. We need a BRG that is for disabled people, we're gonna call it disability, and he's teaching the world that all, there are all of these abilities that you have by harnessing and discovering the power, so, I see a lot of those acts every day. I see it with the everyday people. How can they turn something into an opportunity? He yeah. started his own foundation, Wheels of Happiness, and he goes and works every day teaching all of us what you can do with what you have. For me, he is an inspiration. Well, that is a wonderful way to end with a personal story of that, the fact that each one of us can, can make a difference, that every action matters. So thank you both so much for joining us today. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.